I want to start out by saying all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Rule Well. I want to say shalom on to the brothers out there teaching and preaching the truth worldwide. I want to say shalom on to the hope for lit. The late today's lesson is entitled Don't Forget. Right here, I have a quote pulled up. It says, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. It says, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. See, right now, what's going on? You have Esau, the devil, your adversary, uh, the so called white man. Right now, he's pushing his 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 agenda um, around four corners of the earth, and by way of that vaccine, by way of the COVID nineteen, which ultimately this devil is working on a vaccine to try to you know, you know, give that to you know everybody on the planet. Ultimately, his ultimate goal is to push that RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. <clears throat> Since then, so we're not ignorant of saying devices. But those who cannot remember the past, they're going to be ignorant of his devices. Because two-thirds of the nation of Israel, they sleep right now. You got the so-called Negroes down in Atlanta, Georgia, standing in line to buy some J's. When <laughs> it's, it's, it's been reported, there's going to be a food shortage. But Jake, he too busy to want to get the latest J's. See what I'm saying? Jake bugged out. <clears throat> so I got some articles going into the history of how this devil has treated not only the southern kingdom, but the northern kingdom as well. That's why scriptures say never trust thine enemy. But those who cannot remember the past, they are condemned to repeat it. So guess what? Two thirds of the nation of Israel, they're going to repeat it. Because they don't, they don't know who their enemy is. That's why I got this scripture pulled up. Second Peter three and one. This epistle, so like this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you. That's talking about um, beloved. When you go into that word, is that would die. It's talking about to the house of David. So this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up your pure minds. By way of remembrance. Since then, see, we once knew that we were the Israelites. We once knew that we were from the tribe of Judah. We were from the tribe of Levi, from the tribe of Benjamin, from the tribe of Ephraim, from the tribe of Asher, and so forth. Since then, we once knew that we were Yasharala. He is a prince of the power. We once knew those things. Since then, that's why in this epistle, 2 Peter 3 and 1, this second epistle, beloved, I'll now write unto you and both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? See, these words was once preached unto us back in the ancient world. That's why uh, brothers all around the world, you know what I'm saying, first and foremost, uh, from the from uh, from the apostles of Great Millstone on down, since then they they preaching that 100 percent truth to try to steer up your pure mind because you once knew this. <clears throat> so you got right here. This is going into the 13th Amendment, but it's talking about. Slaves count as three fifths of a person. Since then, see, uh, back in slavery, the Southern Kingdom, you was counted as three fifths of a person. You wasn't even counted as one full human being. You were counted as three fifths of a person. So when you're going right here, <clears throat> I'm gonna read from over here. Introduction: Delegates to the Constitution, Constitution Convention, uh, 1787. How it debated the issue of slavery. George Mason of Virginia argued eloquently against slavery, warning his fellow delegates. Every master of slaves is born a petty tyrant. 
what I'm saying? So he was basically saying, you know, every slave uh, master, <laughs> they basically a petty tyrant. They bring the judgment of heaven on a country as nations cannot be rewarded or punished in the next world. They must be in this. So this devil, he said that <laughs> nations cannot be rewarded or punished in the next world. They must be in this. See right, see right here. See, they don't know the scriptures because they're going to get their punishment in the next world, in the kingdom of heaven. So I'm saying, see, Esau, he doesn't understand the scriptures. They thinking that, okay, I got these slaves. I'm going to beat them into submission. And then guess what? If I don't get judgment on this side, I'm good in the next world. You're wrong, Esau. So he says, as nations cannot be rewarded or punished, in the next world, they uh, they must be in this by an, by an inevitable chain of causes and effects. Uh, providence punishes national sins by natural calamity. So this devil, they didn't think that, hey, you know what I'm saying? If we don't get punished on this side, we're good in the next world. And you're wrong, Esau. So that's right here showing you that, hey, what they thought about us. We was counted as three fifths of a person, and what that was called—that was called the uh, special, or th that's that particular one, three fifths of a person. So you have what's called the special field orders number fifteen. I know we've all heard of the forty acres, forty acres and a mule. Well, this this is what it came from: the special field orders number fifteen. <clears throat> So, Special Field Orders Number 15, Series 1865, were military orders issued during the American Civil War on January 16, 1865, by General William Sherman, commander of the military uh, divisions of the Mississippi of the United States Army. They provided for the conference. So like a confiscation of 400,000 acres of land along the Atlantic coast of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, and the dividing of it into parcels of not more than 40 acres, on which were to be settled approximately 18,000 18, formerly enslaved African-Americans, families, and other Africans then living in the area. All right, so it says the orders <clears throat> were issued following Sherman's march to the sea. Uh, that's basically where, it, uh, if you go into history books, because I, I, because I'm from Georgia, so he basically just went through the south, just just burning everything from Atlanta to the sea, going to uh, I want to say uh, Savannah. So <clears throat> the orders were issued following Sherman's. Uh, march to the sea, they were intended to address the immediate problem of dealing with tens of thousands of African refugees who had joined Sermon's march in search of protection and sustenance and to assure the harmony of action in the area of operation. So I'm going to jump down to here. The orders had little concrete effect and the president and President Andrew Johnson issued a proclamation that returned the land to the southern owners that they took a loyalty oath. Since then, so <clears throat> I'm going to keep reading. General Saxon and his staff at Charleston, South Carolina Freedom Bureau office refused to carry out President Johnson's wishes and denied all applications, applications to have lands returned. In the end, Johnson, so like Johnson and his allies removed General Saxton and his staff, but not before Congress was able to provide legislation to assist some families in keeping their land. Then so you can have all these uh, all these former uh, former enslaved so-called African Americans was, was promised. 40 acres and a mule, and guess what? This devil, Andrew Johnson, reneged on the deal. 
what I'm saying? So as 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 I said, those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it. So when this devil get ready to roll out this uh this 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 vaccination, then that market of beast, see how people forgot about the former atrocities that this devil has done to them. Since then, so our, our people, they're going to fall in line. They're going to trust their enemy. As as Ecclesiastes 10, as Ecclesiastes 12 and 10 says, Never trust thy enemy, for like his iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Since then, so we can't trust this devil. No matter if he offer you this or that, saying he got a cure for the coronavirus, never trust this devil. He's promised you 40 acres and a mew. He said you was three fifths of a, of a human being, and so forth. <clears throat> so I got this part of this dealing with the Northern Kingdom. So from 1778 to 1871, the United States government entered into more than 500 treaties. But Native American Indians, so like Native American tribes, all of these tribes, so like all of these treaties have since been violated in some way or outright broken by the U.S. government, while at least one treaty was violated or broken by Native American tribes. However, violations by one party do not nullify the treaties under U.S. law. The treaties still have legal effect today, and Native Americans and First Nations peoples are still fighting for their treaty rights in federal courts and the United Nations. So we got our Northern Kingdom from the tribe of Gad and the tribe of Reuben. They still fighting this devil in court from treaties today all the way back to 1778 because as 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 under esau's law it said they're still in effect today so why do you trust this devil so i'm saying from 1778 to 2020 you should better see this very clearly that you can't trust this devil but nope so when this devil tell you put on a mask put on the gloves Stay six feet away. You could get COVID nineteen. Fall in line. Never trust thine enemy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into these scriptures. Jeremiah thirteen and twenty three. Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. You can't. This devil can't change. He he's accustomed to doing evil. Look at it. He broke five hundred treaties. He's accustomed to breaking agreements. He's a deal breaker. He set up. He said, "Hey, can I answer, can I uh, interest you into a low interest loan?" See what I'm saying? And then turn around, have a, all kind of interest on it, and repossess it. And then turn around and sell that same house to someone else. You can't trust the devil, man. Never trust our enemy. Ecclesiastes 7 and 13. Consider the work of the Most High. For who can make that straight which he has made crooked? This devil was made crooked. You can't, you, I, don't, I don't understand why Jake sit up there and try to save the so-called white man. He can't be saved. He's in his natural habitat of doing wickedness. That's when he actually operates the best. Hey, that, that's when he's in this element. It's, it's trying to pull a wool over you, Jake. But when you're trying to sit up here and try to come up with a rehabilitation for the so-called white man, he can't be re he can't be rehabilitated. It's not in his in his DNA to be rehabilitated. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 12 and 10, never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rust, so is his wickedness. So he humble himself and go crouching. Listen to this, Jake. Yet take good heed 
and beware of him. You got to be aware of this devil. You got to put you, you got to, you got to, uh, you got to inspect this, this, this devil. So I'm saying you, you got to, you, you got to put him in your, um, uh, your peripheral vision. You got to just take a good look at him. See what I'm saying? So as the scripture say, beware of him and thou shall be, uh, thou shall be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. See what I'm saying? Verse 12, set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. See what I'm saying? When you let this devil, <laughs> you can, hey, listen, Ecclesiastes 12 and 12, set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. See, now you got this devil saying that they the Jews. And we just, some other people, we black now. See what I'm saying? You can <laughs> Set him not by thee, lest when he had overthrown thee. Now they have overthrown, you know, the, the nation of Israel. See what I'm saying? We we dispersed to the twelve, uh, so like we dispersed to the four corners of the world of the of the earth. Now this devil saying that they they the Jews. See what I'm saying? Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat, and thou at the last remember my words. So like and thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Who would pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or such as come now wild beast? Ain't nobody. I can't. I can't pity you if you sit up and playing with a snake and it bites you. Nobody's gonna have pity for you when you sit up here messing around with Esau, the so-called white man. See what I'm saying? So when you when you when you when you mess with fire. What happened? You get burned. So <clears throat> hopefully this lesson was edifying. Till the next time, Shalom. One.